Lord Inquisitor and thinking to myself, now that's a big depiction of how huge 40k is, but this... Jesus! How is it going people? Jack here with another video. Welcome back to the Chill Zone or if you're new, welcome to the Chill Zone. So it's been quite a bit of time since I've had some Warhammer 4K content on the channel and we need to make a change on that, and especially since we are approaching 40k subscribers. Jeez, thank you all of you of different outcomes and walks of life. What? I don't know where I was going with that there. Anyways, today's video has a focus on the Kriegsmen, more specifically on Vrak. These are lovely individuals. And the reason as to why I say that is because, you know, in Warhammer 40k, what usually happens is that when you are a new fan, what you're introduced to first and foremost will most likely be the Space Marines. They are the ones that get promoted all the time. The Guardsmen, which are like the backbone, like 90% of the wars, if I'm not mistaken, in 40k are, well, carried by the Guardsmen, since they are, the Space Marines and even chapters are way too far in between. And if you're like the likes of the Car Caradon, who are just like, hey, we're going in the edge of the universe, in the depths of everything, nobody will ever hear us or see us coming. Then there's no way that you can actually make it to the actual battles at all times. So, Guardsmen, more specifically this time, Kriegsmen. I know just about the lore of Vrak, like briefly, right? It was explained to me by a friend. And it's. That what? is crazy. 17 years of warfare. After, after your, your world has been nuked to pieces by your own uh what was it was it a, like a commander no i'm thinking about this dude your uh, colonel yurton yes for if there ever has been a loyalist he's the one because you see the people are trying or at least his entire planet wants to secede from the imperium of man because yeah you know, everybody's too keen on having some dude swinging his big schlong around just commanding everybody to yeah, pray your tithe in, soldiers. I mean, we, we say that we like to be loyalists, but sometimes, sometimes chaos, chaos is more appealing. Right now, I'm envisioning people just writing heretic in the comment section. But no, the dude gets a wind of this and it's just like, hey, you know, what if I just counsel the Imperium about this and they allow me to just nuke our planet for ages? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And so he did. And now we have this wonderful world that is just filled with stormtrooper-like soldiers with good aim who have some masochistic desire for death and especially a deep, deep urge of bunking people with shovels. So, the first video that I'm going to be reacting to is from a channel called Vrax. This is called Chapter 1. Please do go and subscribe and like this video. So, without further ado, let's jump into this. In the Emperor's service, the Depths Corps would pay any price. Kagori. Hmm. What's the name of that, um... Or was he? The one during the siege of Rax, that is Ecclesiarch, uh, not an Ecclesiarch, but like some higher up at least. <laughs> Got himself in a fortress. I would imagine so, right? <sighs> that was one of the most intense head notes that I've ever seen. Oh, the scale of this is nice. Look at that. It's 
Yo, that's some fucked up shit to hear over the radio. But I mean, <laughs> they're used to it. Whoa! <laughs> Jesus, the scale! I remember watching Lord Inquisitor and thinking to myself, now that's a big depiction of how huge 40k is, but this... Jesus! <laughs> oh, Kim Jong-un is just soiling his pants if he saw this. It makes sense. It makes sense though. Yo, you've done such an amazing work with this. Texturing on most things are like done well enough so that you don't even question. Like you don't need to look for more complexity into the geometry of things. It's just enough. <laughs> okay. Wow. Every strike cruiser is there and you have a little station. Oh, okay. Stop. Dude. I wonder if they work with Yanovich. I remember, like, yeah, I saw him. Oh. Okay. Beautiful. Nicolas Le, Le Jeune. Nicolas Le Jeune. Who is? Hmm. Oh, they've got uh, music from these guys. That's nice. Wow. Okay, let me explain something here. I am baffled by the sheer scale of this. It's beautiful. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so sad, it's so sad at the same time, like when you watch something that is put out by GW and you look at this, like fan-made works, which is five minutes, right? You have a solid five minutes worth of footage here. That seemed to have... I'm not going to criticize completely, I've watched uh, Death's, uh, Angels of Death, right? There were moments in Angels of Death where I was jaw-dropped. Seeing how it is that the the strike cruisers, what is it called, the, the sort of ball, was uh, was being bombarded. The the battle that they had there, it was very very nicely done. And the the scale of that was not exactly mentioned because what we mostly got to see were like gene stealers in that in that show. And but there was this one moment where they got a message from uh, from, from Dante. Telling them to return to, to Baal Prime. And they were realizing that they will have to sacrifice in this Manufactorum world about, I think, 4 billion human lives that have been left behind. Because that is the scale of 40k, right? That's usually what it is. I hope you get what I'm getting at here. Um, this is grand. I love how massive everything looked. And just. Yeah, I mean, the search structure of it, everything was meticulously put, the atmosphere was nice, 
the lack of dialogue because Kriegsman, I think having a conversation with them would kind of suck. I would like to imagine them to be like the uh, goofy German soldier. Major, we are about to run the house of ammo. So how many traitor legions are in your sight? Ein, zwei, drei, lot. I cannot do a German accent for the life of me. I can't. It's just, it's not me. Like, I can understand just a little bit, but I cannot do the accent. A fair Kriegsman, get me vermin speak. But now to Janovic. I hope that I am pronouncing his name correctly. I will always say the J because we use Y, like we pronounce the J as Y in Danish. Uh, I've seen this guy model on a live stream and I know that he uses Unreal Engine, at least he shifted to Unreal Engine because it's, it's a new cool thing but also the program is freaking great. He's a pro. I don't know how he gets to do the things that he does <laughs> but uh, work, I guess lots, lots, lots of practice. I would like to get there but uh, Perhaps I'm just too lazy, not too diligent enough with my 3D works, but uh, hopefully one day. Anyways, let's get into watching The Siege of Rax. It's a passion project, completely unofficial. In the cruel dark of the distant evil time, great war in space inspired by various franchises. Okay. <laughs> wow. Oh, I like the details of, like, bombs going off. Rax Prime. And like, how they're branching? Oh, storms! Oh my god, I'm, I'm dumb. Just for lightning strikes. I could imagine that those were, like, fires going through trenches. But those wouldn't be visible from outer space. Yeah, this was the fortress that he was modeling. Wow, dude. Let us see that cardinal. How dare he? God damn. Alpha Legion. <laughs> I am Alpharius. God damn it. Filtration, as always. Just gonna get like a lamp shining on the face of a Kriegsman suddenly. And so came the Inquisition. <gasps> oh, they did know. Now that is nice work. Like, Trader Kriegsmen are like ugly. I hate the design. Didn't even get to react. Yep, when you <laughs> you don't even need that ammo, just go with the bayonets.
effective. Oh, you know what's so nice about this? Ah, this both of animations, right? It's this lack of uniformity in the movements. No. Oh, freaking drop work. As always, I highly recommend to go and like and subscribe to his channel. Wow. Here's one thing. Um, a thing that I find a bit... I won't say it's, it's not a bad thing, right? Conceptually, it makes sense that most of this will take place during the night, right? It's tactically accurate. However, it's like a lot of things that you miss is when you have to account for the lighting during the night. That sucks. I've tried to do renders, um, yeah, in dark environments, getting the right details. Like you may have seen one that I, <laughs> that I posted once. I made a post about the uh, Doom Guy vs. Otis once. Um, like those are difficult to render, and there's a lot of details that you that you lose when you don't have accurate or at least not accurate but enough amount of lighting the, the the stuff that you can do to correct for that and he definitely did here but i think that a lot of the uh, details on the models that he had created may have gone a bit lost but <laughs> I mean, look at this. It's cool. And they, they got the concept across. It was nice. It is beautiful. More power to them. And please, 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 GW, pull yourself together because there are people who can do a lot better jobs than you. Except for, I'll say, Exodite, okay? Only watch just a teaser trailer of it. I will be checking it out, I guess, today. And I'll give you a review. With that said, though, I wish you all to have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching this. If you liked it, hit the likes and or subscribe button to see more. See you guys in the next one. Bye.